I was like, this man was holding up a hanger. He was suggesting that I beat my autistic son for his behavior. I'm coming home. Longing for you, pick up the phone. Catching the fight, I'm coming home. Back to the place I've always known. I'm not happy. Uh, tomorrow is the last day before winter break. The last day. I got a call from the principal this morning. I got to teach gen ed today. Oh. And fourth grade. I don't know those kids. I don't know that. But it's okay. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, right? Teacher. I don't know. I, I don't know if she has sub plans. This was an unexpected absence. Come along with me. Y'all, look at this classroom. Look how many kids fit in this classroom. Look at all the stuff and all the work. So I have the sub plans. I'm trying to go over them. And everyone keeps telling me good luck. What does that mean? How do you get that? <laughs> Why do I need so much luck? But you know what? We're going to make this happen today. This is what we do, y'all. Teach your life. I do not know what I was thinking. <laughs> I actually, so I taught special ed last year at a different school site and then um, was recruited to come over to this school site for my special ed position. However, I was super considering teaching general ed. Like I was like, you know what? I love special ed, but I think I want to do special or general ed. I think I wanted to be the same kids with the same behaviors. <laughs> A little bit more typical from day to day and I was wrong we had an amazing day in general and the kids and I got along so well they laughed and laughed I was telling them stories and encouraging them as you saw a girl made me a card gave me gifts like it was crazy how sweet these kids were in general ed I got to give general ed teachers uh, some more credit I tell you that's a lot of kids and that's a lot of attention that they need. Oh my goodness. Two reasons why I feel like I was definitely supposed to be in that class today. First reason was I found out that a kid in her class, the class I was subbing for, cannot read, cannot count. I'm a special ed teacher. So I'm going to find out why this child is not receiving services and um, what we can do to help him succeed from now on. Second reason why I feel like I was in the class, there was a girl in there who had a behavior plan. All my kids have behavior plans because they're all diagnosed with emotion, emotional disturbance. So we all have behavior plans. This one child in her class had one. And what was interesting was this girl had zero behaviors with a behavioral plan. Um, she said the plan was going to extend to the end of the year. It's December, so we typically would not do that. We would do it for a short period of time, and as they progress, then we would, like, pull back on the restraints. This girl is not allowed to do a lot of things. She's not allowed to go to PE with her class, lunch with her class, recess with her class, or any kind of special anything. She's sent to a TK room. That's transitional kindergarten. They're four she's in the fifth grade so i talked to her and we got to know each other and by the end of the day this girl was up showing examples of how to do long division step by step this girl was my number one helper and she was incredible you just never know what you're gonna get in a child and i'm so thankful i got the best of her and i encouraged her that that can be her reality every single day good morning good morning pack it's technically afternoon so exciting day today i am looking for a couch why 
my room in the front looks like this. Yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> so I did not bring the couch from my last house um, with us. So the kids have been having a blast riding the hoverboards, riding their scooters, but like, it's time to sit down. So it's couch time. Hope I can find something that's not a million dollars that will deliver because we don't have a truck and that I love and that can withstand the force of many children. Let's see, shall we? I made it here to work. I thought that was going to be the hard part, making it here to work. Oh no, that wasn't the hard part. Hard part was getting it. I have taken my shoes off because um, our portable is flooded. I swam here basically and goodness gracious, I'm so glad I had on knee length boots, but what are my kids supposed to do? We supposed to carry them inside? Take a look. We're flooding. The school is flooding. This is a problem. Well, things are never boring, that's for sure. <laughs> Hope all of you are having a great day. <laughs> Stay safe out there, especially if you're in California. Goodness gracious, this is unheard of. Uh, one school has already closed because of flooding. We shall see, y'all. We shall see. I may be off next. Well, it's the next day. Yesterday was wild, y'all. Yesterday was absolutely wild. I did not get to go home. And they ended up putting us in first an office with three other people. And then in the cafeteria. And then in the library. It was not fun. It was not fun. But it didn't rain like it was supposed to overnight, so I'm hoping that my portable is not flooded today. Absolute best part of yesterday was going home. I went home. I went home on my lunch break. I got to see my kids, and it was fantastic. Worst part about it, when I went home, Elijah didn't look good. He looked pale. He's been sick for three weeks. I called Kaiser a week ago. They said he's still going around. It's lasting longer than normal. Probably not a big deal. We can't fit him in. That was Kaiser in the city I used to live. Y'all know I just moved. So I called them as soon as I saw him yesterday. They said, you want to come in today and tomorrow? I was like, today or tomorrow? I said today. So ran home right after work, picked him up, threw him in the car, went to Kaiser. Guess what, y'all? He has a sinus infection. My poor baby has a sinus infection. So he's on antibiotics. He's on nasal spray and he should be feeling better. Hopefully like tomorrow. I will check in with you guys during my lunch break, assuming I get one. Assuming things don't go too crazy. I'm running late today. I'm actually far early for work, but due to the storms, I'm picking up a coworker slash friend who 
doesn't have a car and usually rides his bike. And then he is buying coffee. So, have a great day, everybody. It's time pack. The movers are here. Finally going to get my washer and dryer and my kitchen table to my house. Woo -hoo. Today's the day. Today's the day I've been working towards for a long time. You know, I just moved from Vallejo. We needed to get out of that neighborhood, but also the school district did not have appropriate placement for my son, my son and it just was not a good situation for us. So I got a job working in this district and today my twins are coming to school with me. So there we go. They just got in the car. They're super nervous. They couldn't sleep last night. One of them had a stomach ache. I'm like, oh my goodness. But I'm excited. I'm gonna have them at my school all day until June. All right, Pax, this is who I have with me. Say hi, guys. Hi. Are you ready for school today? Yes. New school, new teacher? Are you excited? Are you scared? That's okay. We will have a great day. I'll keep you posted, Pax. I don't know what's happening here. I just not finishing the vlogs. <laughs> just at the end of the day. So I want to post, give you posted, keep you posted, give me an update about um what happened yesterday. So we got to school. Everything was great. They went to my classroom, like you saw. They looked around. Everything was great. We went to the office so I could introduce them to the office staff, and then things took a turn. So the secretary was like, do you know what class they're in? And I'm like, yeah, I know what class they're in. I picked their teacher before break. And she's like, actually, we split them. And I was like, and the kids freaked out one more than the other. And so they got really upset. I took, um, tried to take Hannah to her class. She wouldn't go inside. Took JJ to his class. He was fine. Took her back and she was in tears. So thankfully her teacher, who I love, went and got a friend from inside the classroom and the friend came out she introduced herself she um took hannah inside sat next to her and by the end of the day these kids were happy they couldn't wait to go back to school today but i was a mess all morning i kept looking out my window to see if i could see them i went by her classroom they were at music so they weren't there it's probably better that way but whoo uh, now i can breathe now they know what to expect and now they're with me <laughs> Thing that happened yesterday that was not fun. I don't think I told y'all. I'm going back to school. Yes, because the job that I'm in requires me to have a multi-subject special education credential with an authorization in autism. I am now back in school. So I started, I'm going to the University of Massachusetts online. I started, started doing my work. I had seven pages of written notes, highlighted, things printed out, all the things. Had a paper I was three quarters of the way done with, was rushing home after all my meetings yesterday to turn it in, only to get told by the advisor that they enrolled me in the wrong class. I already paid for the book. I have already done a significant amount of work only for me to have wasted my time. But at least I'm getting back into the swing of being in school again. Being in school though with all these kids and working full time and being a pastor on the weekends, I just don't know how it's gonna work out. So Elijah struggled yesterday. He struggled because he wanted to go to school, which I totally get. 
he wants to go back to school, but he has a sinus infection. He also woke up saying his head still hurts, so he's only been on antibiotics for two days. He can't go back yet. Plus, uh, the school sent me more forms that I have to submit today, and there's no school on Monday. So I'm pretty sure that he will be able to start on Tuesday when the kids go back after break. All right, Pack, here we go. Hannah Jane, you ready for school? Day two, very excited. All right, and just like that, we're already here. It takes us like four minutes to get to school. We're never gonna be late. Oh, all right, we got breakfast this morning. Getting ready for school. All right, Pack. Back from the gym, feeling all good with the endorphins and all the things that happen when you work your body. So I'm ready to tell you what happened. This actually happened a little over a week ago, but I couldn't share it then because it still makes me catch my breath that this actually happened to us. So we were going to a discount clothing home multi kind of store that they have in my town and I had all of the kids with me. The big kids, the little kids and all the kids in between. I had all the kids. So we get there and everything is fine. I want to preface this by saying nothing like this has ever happened before. We were not prepared. I was not prepared and we just kind of had to react. So we're going in the store. I'm trying to get my teenager, William, his, um, some pants, some shirts, just some stuff for school, just trying to get everybody what they need. You know, I'm still trying to fill this house. So we go to the store, we get there. And as soon as we walk in, I realize something is off. So Elijah, my sweet son on the spectrum, he starts screaming, not continuously, but just like a shriek, kind of a shriek. And I was like, what is that? Elijah is minimally verbal, so sometimes he makes sounds, but this was different. And he didn't end there. He started grabbing stuff off of the shelves and throwing them to the floor. I'm telling you, he did it four times in less than 60 seconds. I was shocked. His siblings were shocked and we all just responded. So thankful, all my kids started grabbing the stuff, putting it back together. Some of it had come out of the cases. They're putting it back in, they're putting it back on the shelves. I grab Elijah by one hand and put my other hand on the back of his uh, shoulders right here. And I just guide him to the front door. And I say, nope, that's not happening. We're going to go. And that's when it happened. I'm walking out the store and I hear the guy at the cash register say, hey, hey. I didn't know if he was talking to me or not, so that's why he got to say it two times. And then I turned and looked, and he said to me, do you want to borrow this? And I like, I was so overwhelmed with what was happening that happened so fast. I was like, what, what? He goes, do you want to borrow this? This man was holding up a hanger. He was suggesting that I beat my autistic son for his behavior. When I tell you that I was horrified, I wasn't embarrassed because the situation happened. I was horrified that an adult would one, suggest that I beat a child with a hanger, whether he had special needs or not. And so my response to him was, that's absolutely inappropriate. My son actually has special needs. So everything is not always what it seems. I am a special education teacher and that suggestion, it, that's not appropriate in any way, shape or form. So I take my Elijah out to the car. I have the teenagers text me when it's time to pay. One of them texts me. I have the other one come and sit in the car with Elijah. I go in and I pay. At this point, the security guard, the manager, and the guy who said it all apologized. Apparently he knew that he had blown it and he was gonna get in big trouble for it, I'm assuming. The problem is this. He had no awareness of autism. He had no awareness of children on the spectrum and his first instinct was to show me a hanger that I should beat him with. That's a problem. So for those of you like me who have YouTube channels, for those of you who are out in the community, your parents of a child that has special needs 
or is on the autism spectrum, I just have to say, keep going. Keep going. Apparently the awareness is not enough. Apparently everything we do is not enough. And there are more people that do not know our kids and their situations. The saddest part about all of this is I found out why. He had never done that before. He's never done it again. About 45 minutes to an hour after this incident, Elijah came to me and said he didn't feel good. And I felt his head and he had a fever that had spiked. So he wasn't feeling good. Something was coming. He could feel it in his body. He couldn't say it at the time. And that's why he freaked out at the store. Regardless of the reason, we need more awareness, more acceptance, and more understanding. We're children and adults with special needs, period.